Hi, and welcome to my channel. I've got a lot of photo bags, and I've bought another one. I've bought a Billingham. Now, are Billinghams really worth the money? This is an old one, but let's find out. There's a fine line to be drawn when you're transporting around your photographic equipment between carrying the kitchen sink and not carrying enough to actually do the job. In the past, um, I have to say that, um, particularly when I was working professionally, I had to carry the kitchen sink with me. Um, I had to carry multiple lenses, multiple camera bodies, and I usually ended up with far too much weight on my shoulder. And indeed, in later life, I'm actually suffering from that um, because I've got a bad back. But I still have a lot of photo bags and I've been looking for something that's a little bit better quality for some time. Um, Billingham bags have always had an allure to them, but my goodness are they expensive. Um, I mean, it depends what your definition of expensive is, but um, the price of a, a reasonable second-hand lens for a camera bag, to me, seems quite a lot of money. Um, that's probably because I'm a tightwad, but, you know, that's the way it goes. Um, so I've been looking recently for second-hand Billingham bags um, to pick up one, and to see really whether it is worth all the hype. Um, we all know that um, many people swear by Billingham bags, many professionals swear by them, and uh, there are many television presenters, um, one I can think of with the um, merging program Top Gear, who um, sees his Billingham as a comfort blanket. So, are they worth it? Well, I saw one on eBay a few weeks ago. Um, basically, it had no bids on it, and I picked it up for around £50. Um, this seems to be quite a low ball these days for a good quality Billingham. Um, most of them seem to be going second-hand in any sort of condition for around £125 to £160. So again, seems a lot for a second-hand bag. But... Uh, I paid my money, and I waited for it to arrive. What turned up was this. A bag from, uh, I'll give a plug to them, the British uh, Heart Foundation, um, and an incredibly sturdy piece of rubberized lined canvas with an absolutely cavernous interior. It doesn't look much when it's all flattened out like this um, into its sort of messenger bag state, but there's a huge amount of room in this. And the thing that immediately impressed me, um, and this comes from someone who I have to admit in a, a previous life, I spent quite a lot of time riding horses. And this reminds me of a really good bit of saddlery. All the leather is absolutely top notch and it's all put together, um, real belt and braces. It's just not gonna come apart. Um, this, I, I tried to identify what this bag was and it appears that it's actually or maybe quite a rarity in the sense that um, it seems to be um, from the 1970s um, and to be one of their earlier bags. Um, well, whatever. Um, it has 
this huge internal space, but it came to me with no dividers at all, um, which would be a bit of a problem. But as I said in a previous uh, video about bags, um, I've started uh, picking up the bag liners that some companies produce. And for some while, I've had one of these, which is basically a padded liner, which will slip into a bag and you can turn anything from a backpack uh, to um, your luggage into your camera bag. So I decided to put the two together. Okay, with the liner fitted, there are very few photo bags that I think could perform the magic trick, which is making an RB67 disappear inside um, and barely bulging. Um, all joking aside, this bag is absolutely huge. And when fitted with this liner, which can be moved around and clipped about how you want it, um, it's probably the most eminently practical bag I've got. My eventual aim is to have multiple liners available and store my kit in liners ready to stick straight in the bag so that I don't have to go through all the hassle of emptying the bag out and loading it up with something else for a different sort of shoot. Um, I have to say I got the idea initially of using these liners from the work I did with this little bag. Um, this is in one sense completely the opposite to um, a Billingham. This I think costs around £13 online and I spent an extra 16 or so for a little liner um, with dividers which I don't have it in the moment and this tends to carry my Leica rangefinder gear. It's perfect size, just hangs on your hip, it's actually got a waist belt as well so that it doesn't flap around. But it turned me on to this liner's idea um, and indeed I could put this small liner in the Billingham um, with maybe one camera body um, and then use the rest of the capacity for packing you know, um, toiletries and things for um, you know, cabin baggage on a plane. Um, the liner's way of going to me seems to be the um, ideal practical way. Get yourself a bag and get yourself a set of liners. It takes a little bit more room up inside. Um, but if you buy a bag that isn't padded, um, there's really plenty of room. Um, so yeah, um, this is to me the way forward. My conclusions on the Billingham bag? Well, I think it's gonna be around probably for longer than me. It's the kind of thing that you leave to your grandchildren. And I think I got it for a fantastic price. I'm rather glad that I got it from a charity shop, which means um, that money will be going to a good cause. Uh, if you see a Billingham bag going at a good price, pick one up because they are fabulous. Um, possibly one that's smaller than this. This is huge. Um, and in of itself, it's, it's reasonably heavy, but it can take a massive amount of gear. Uh, my Nikon F4 and five lenses just disappear in there without causing a problem at all. And the shoulder strap is nice and wide and really doesn't cause very much stress on your shoulder when you're actually carrying it. Um, I intend to use it for um, foreign trips as soon as we can travel abroad again. I think you know that's going to come up very soon. But um, all in all, uh, a fabulous um, acquisition. I'm looking forward to using it even more. So we've passed 300 subscribers on the channel and I'd like to thank everybody 
who subscribe so far and people who've left comments. Um, it's absolutely wonderful and um, I'm so stoked that things are going forward and improving. Um, you may see that the quality of this video is a little bit better than previous ones because I've invested in uh, Lumix G85, which um, now will allow me to do 4K and much, much higher quality. Um, so, this has been a short video, but if you've enjoyed it, um, perhaps you'd like to hit the like button. And if you've really enjoyed what you've seen so far, then think about subscribing. Uh, it's wonderful for the channel. I'm seeing everything expand. Um, you'll see in the links that I now have a Patreon channel. Uh, I have um, basically prints for sale as well. If you go over to my website and follow the link there, you'll see that um, there are a lot of my black and white prints that are now you can order, hang on your wall um, and fit it in with your home decor. So, um, you take care of yourselves till I see you again and keep taking pictures.